There's a really common question that comes up all the time and it's this, I have been decluttering, I have been organizing, why does my house still look like a mess? Why can't we stay on top of it? And the truth is there are three types of clutter that keep sneaking in. And so we're gonna go through the whole house. There's a bunch of stuff that you can strategically remove today. It doesn't have to take a long time, but it will virtually solve this problem. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. And even though our family's been living as a minimalist for about eight years now, the truth is, is that this can still happen in our house too, if I'm not aware of what's coming in. And like I said, there's three specific types of things that come in that if we are not aware of it, and if we are not actively moving it back out of our house, it looks innocent. It looks like all of the rest, but it's actually not. So let me describe these quick and then we are gonna go through the entire house and get rid of a ton of stuff today. All right, duplicates, meaning you bought a new pair of shoes, but you didn't get rid of the old ones. So these are my old garden shoes. I bought a new pair of garden shoes. I have not worn these in almost a year. So these need to go, these are duplicates. And then there's free stuff, like the hotel shampoos and extra condiment packets from the restaurant. and things we did not ask for. In this box is trampoline accessories. Our trampoline doesn't need accessories, right? I don't even wanna open it because I don't wanna be tempted to keep the trampoline accessory. The trampoline is up, the kids have been jumping on it. We don't need accessories, right? So things that come with other things that we didn't even ask for. Okay, so let's work together in your entryway. So like I said, I got a new pair of garden shoes. These can go now. Also, I noticed Adeline also got a new pair of just kind of like casual sandals. So these ones can go. I'm also seeing duplicates that Gage has these flip flops and he also has these slide on sandals. I don't think that we need both. So ugh. <laughs> we're gonna let these ones go because what I had noticed is that in the past, all of our shoes actually fit on the shoe bench here. So this is kind of my container and how I can tell when the inventory is creeping up too much. So I know we have too many pairs of shoes now. We are gonna let all of these go. I'm actually gonna look for a few more pairs, but for now, let's keep going and looking for other stuff as well. Another thing that can multiply in our homes are baseball caps. So from time to time, I'll just ask the kids like, hey, you have three hats, pick out your favorite one, or you have two. If something is so special, but they're not wearing it anymore, then it goes in their memory box. It doesn't live in the closet because again, we have to keep low inventory here or nothing gets put away. It has to be just as easy to put stuff away as it is to leave it out. All right, what else? Lunch bags and boxes. So have you gotten a new one and now the old one is living in your closet? Similarly, purses and backpacks, fanny packs, they also tend to multiply as well. So again, we're just asking ourselves, have I gotten a new one? And if so, did I fail to remove the old one? It's very common. Often, I don't know, at least for myself, I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm gonna like the new one as much or I wanna keep the old ones for a, a more casual time or, or whatever, right? We have reasons, but this is how the over all inventory creeps up in our house and we don't get to enjoy the benefits of simple living. Also, Amazon packages and boxes, all the stuff that comes in the mail. Again, I like to keep a couple extra packages in case I need to send something back or mail something. I mean, I haven't had to buy a bubble mailer in years, right? But we have to put a limit to it. So I always keep three bubble mailers and a couple boxes and then the rest just get recycled. Oh yeah, and sunglasses. I just bought these at a gas station because I'd forgot my good ones somewhere. They're not comfortable. They're actually kind of cute, right? They're not comfortable at all. I don't like how it feels in my nose or the sides. So these I'm gonna donate. Again, I would be tempted like, oh, well I should keep them for another time when I forget them. But I'm gonna forget these too, right? Hey Corbin, are these ones yours? Yeah. These are actually pretty cool and you still wear them, right? All right, you can keep those. I'm gonna donate these. You can also use the same filter for coats, jackets. Again, have I gotten a new one? Umbrellas, have I gotten a new one? And then is there an old one that I'm keeping for just in case? Also, any free promotional stuff, usually it's just not worth keeping, unfortunately, right? We're so much better about not taking it anymore, but it still creeps in. And this has just been sitting on the windowsill unused for a couple weeks. So it's been time tested. No one sees value in it anymore. So it's time to let it go. And what stuff might be cluttering up that you just didn't ask for? I was not joking. I'm not gonna open this box of accessories. I'm actually just gonna put it in the garbage. I know that probably bothers some people, but I don't have the bandwidth and I know 
because I'm, I'm very creative that if I open this and I see what's inside, I'm probably gonna be like, oh, we could use that there or there or here. We don't actually need any of this. I haven't missed anything that's in here. And so by just putting this whole box in the garbage can, it is done and I never have to deal with it again. If I open it up and start going through it or worse yet, the kids see what's inside, it is a whole can of worms and it is a bunch of stuff that then I have to deal with. So. I don't want to like, please hear me. I don't want to be wasteful. I, I want to be kind to the earth and all those things, right? But it's too much. At some point, we just have to be protective of our home, our peace, our mental health. And so sometimes we have to let go of perfectly good things. Okay, now another thing you're gonna to wanna to declutter from all your bedrooms are any mattress covers or mattresses with fiberglass in them. Have you seen this in the news lately? It's often used in mattresses for fire safety, but if the mattresses begin to wear out or are at all defective, it can actually start to get into our systems, our kids' systems. So today's video is sponsored by Helix Kids and we are so glad to say, all of their mattress, Helix Kids and the regular Helix line are fiberglass free, but they also go so much further beyond that with all of their safety testing. All of the foam in these mattresses is Certipure US certified, which guarantees they are made without any hazardous chemicals, including ozone depleters, mercury, dangerous heavy metals, formaldehyde, PBDE flame retardants, fiberglass, and more. The Helix Kids mattress designed by Helix Sleep is a premium mattress in a box designed specifically with growing kids' needs and preferences in mind. Helix Kids mattresses are guaranteed safe, comfortable, durable, and are conveniently shipped directly to your door. And our boys have had these mattresses for a little over six months now. They love them so much. They sleep really well on them. But here is what is so cool about these mattresses. They're actually double-sided. So one side is for ages three to seven, and this side is a little bit firmer so it's designed specifically for their developmental stages and then you can flip it over and the other side is specifically designed for ages 8 through 12 it's a, it's just a little bit softer you, you can tell a little bit if you push on the mattresses and this is really cool it has an eco-friendly and plant-based durable water resistant finish that is both stain and water repellent because we know accidents still sometimes happen it also has a microbe shield which combats odor causing bacteria to maintain hygiene the helix kids mattress has been tested and approved by medical doctors, sleep consultants, child behavioral specialists, and most importantly, real parents and kids ages three through 12. Helix Kids Mattress was named Parent Magazine's 2022 Best Mattress. And of course, they're so easy to order to get to your house so you get a 100 night risk-free sleep trial. All of the mattresses are assembled in America and shipping is fast and free in the US. Beyond that, you also get a 10 year warranty and they have some flexible financing options as well. So if you want to save at 20% off your own Helix Kids mattresses, you can visit our link down below. It's helixsleep.com slash minimal mom, and you're going to get two free pillows as well. And as long as we're up here, why don't we talk about a few other things that we can declutter in here? So kids toys definitely fall into that category of things that come in, but then don't go back out again, right? We're not, we're not usually very diligent with the like one in one out rule when it comes to kids toys. So we do need to go through their rooms pretty frequently and look for stuff that is broken, that they have outgrown, or they're simply not playing with. And actually let's talk about two things, kids toys and kids clothes, sometimes as parents, we become attached to them, we want them to play with them or wear them. And so just be observant. Again, collect data in your child's bedroom. What aren't they playing with? What aren't they wearing? What do they never choose? What are the things they always go to? Like, well, for sure, we'll keep those. What is the stuff that is just left on the floor, at the bottom of the drawer, or to the wayside? Let's let this other stuff go, promote the stuff they actually use, and their bedroom is gonna be so much easier to keep clean, and you're probably gonna find that they play better and for longer on their own as well. Okay, now I know we've made a lot of passes <laughs> through the bathroom together, right? But again, let's look at it through this lens of these three categories. So what things are duplicates? What have I replaced but not got rid of the original? What things I did I take for free because I thought I was gonna make use of them? Or what things did I not ask for and I just received and now I've been hanging on to them? Who knows why? Okay, duplicates. Do you have any hair products, lotions, or styling tools that you've recently replaced? So I have this bin under the sink. Works great to put all my styling products in. I got this new curling iron and it was to replace this one. This one is still in here. Why did we keep this one? I don't know, just in case, right? <laughs> but it makes it harder to put stuff away. So I'm gonna donate this one, keep this one. So again, what things have you gotten new but not got rid of the old thing? Another thing is earrings. These tend to multiply and hair accessories. It's not uncommon for our girls to get new hair clips, headbands, whatever. 
but what happens? We just keep piling them in and the old ones don't come out. So again, if we can be really intentional, when something new comes in, something old goes out, it is something that you can learn and, and just really become second nature after a little while. We just have to be aware of it. And we have to remind ourselves that why are we doing this? Because it is so much easier to put stuff away when the drawers and cabinets aren't jam packed with the stuff, right? Okay, let's talk about free stuff, right? So maybe you like to take hotel samples, that kind of stuff. Are you the type of person that is gonna systematically use these up? And if you are, do you often forget about them if they are shoved underneath the cabinet? So if you want to start actually using these up, you might need to put them in a more obvious spot, right? If they are at the back of the cabinet down here, we're all, none of us have that good of a memory, right? So make sure they're somewhere where you can see them. And uh, how about makeup we buy and then we just don't love it, right? And this was like a elf, it's like a halo glow liquid filter. Liquid filter, doesn't that sound cool? Like, oh, right. Well, it turns out there's a fine line between glow and just look really oily. I don't know. It did not work well. I do think I can take it back, but do you have to have the original packaging? I don't know. Just not knowing that has kept me from it, right? It was an impulse buy when I was checking out and I regret it, but me keeping it is not going to make it suddenly start working for my skin type. So I could share it with someone else, toss it in the garbage, but let's just, let's move on with life, right? It's not, we don't have time and energy for this type of stuff. Okay. Welcome to the laundry room. This is like the epitome of stuff coming in and not going out again. Our two boys, Gage and Corbin, they're eight and 10. This is their sock bin, right? And here's what I know about them. If this bin is full, not heaping full, just regular full of socks, they have more than enough socks. We keep the socks in here for the kids. It's very convenient. So what happened was they got new socks and nothing happened with the old ones. These ones on top, almost every single one, the heel um, has a hole in it. And so these were replaced. These are going and they have more, oh yeah, toe and heel on this one, yep. <laughs> like, I don't know how they can wear out socks so quickly, right? But these need to go in the garbage because they each got two 10 packs of socks, or 12, I don't know. This is full of socks now for them. So they have more than enough socks. They were just buried by all the old ones. And again, if that is how things are stored, it's a mess, right? No one's gonna put stuff away. And so I love to use the container concept, keep what comfortably fits inside, let the rest go. It's really helpful for my brain. <laughs> this also happened with Tom's t-shirts. He tends to just buy new ones and then not get rid of the old ones. Again, I know there's like ideas of like, oh, well, we'll use the old ones for rags or, He'll wear them when he's getting especially dirty or something like that, but it's too many. So new ones came in, old ones didn't go out. So we just need to quick, make a quick pass through that. Also, have you gotten extra like stain removers or things like that? Is there an old one that needs to go because you like the new one better? Any detergents or other cleaning products that you've tried, but just, you don't actually really like them. Okay, and how about picture frames where you want to keep the photo, but you're not using the frame? So these we used to have displayed for a long time, but it's been many years now, and obviously the frame has seen at better days. So I'm just gonna take out the photo, and then I'm gonna put it into my memory box. Wait, you don't have a memory box? Are you, how long have we been spending time together? I really hope that you're kidding, right? My previous video, we talked all about memory boxes, why every single person in your household needs a memory box. Will you please get a memory box? It, it really makes life so much easier to have a safe spot for all of your super special things. All right, that is out of there and now this can get donated. This is seriously one of my favorite pictures ever. And actually, if we're talking about photos, let me give you a quick tip for reducing the number of photos you have to organize, and that is to just discard the duplicates. Again, we're looking for duplicates. And so, you know, back in the old days when we'd get a whole roll of film printed, often we had a whole roll or a bunch of pictures for one event. And most often we don't actually need that many. So you can actually get through photos pretty quickly if you're just looking for duplicates or unnecessary ones. For most events, if I have one or two photos from that, it's more than enough. I don't need all 24 and I certainly don't need the duplicate prints. All right, as we're passing by the living room, let's grab a few things. So throw pillows that have seen better days. And so I love throw it. They never look as dirty. Well, it's good. They don't look as dirty on camera. Throw pillows that have seen better days. Now I had really great intentions of getting 
uh, new covers for the inserts for this and all the things. But the truth is, I have enough pillows right now. I don't need something extra to do or to look for. And so I'm gonna let these go. And I told the kids they didn't have to clean up their Legos uh, for this, but how about Lego boxes? Now you do you when it comes to this type of stuff. I usually keep them for the first week or two. And then after that, I let them go. The Legos kind of tend to get mixed in. Now, if you have special sets, your kids really like to keep them in there. Of course, do that then. But ours never go back in the boxes. So I'm not gonna keep them. I'm not worried about them being collectibles in the future, trying to keep all the pieces together. That's just not how we roll in our house, which is totally fine, right? So these are gonna get recycled. And then also, do you have any like newspapers, magazines? I love the other day a friend said, she's like, you know they call them periodicals, right? Like magazines and newspapers, they're meant to be periodical. They're not meant to keep forever because what happens? They keep coming and coming and coming. There'll always be a new one, right? So we don't have to worry so much about learning everything and reading everything from one magazine or newspaper. There's always gonna be new ones and more. Don't they kind of just like recycle all the same content through them anyways, right? So take out the extra magazines and newspapers, also any extra throw blankets, candles, Okay, now there's some things here in the kitchen that we don't always talk about. Let's talk about serving dishes, but sentimental things too, because I think there's a difference between secondhand sentimental and firsthand sentimental. So here's what I mean. Here are two things that I have from my grandma Adeline. So this was the tablecloth. I talk about this all the time. This is the tablecloth that was on the table when we'd have Christmas and meals and celebrations at her house. This was a serving bowl that my mom gave to me and said, this is your grandma Adeline's. I don't ever specifically remember this bowl being used. So you basically could have told me this was anyone's bowl because I don't have a direct memory of it. I don't have firsthand sentimental value on this. So this I don't, but this I do. This I could pick out, I would see it. It just triggers happy memories. And so I think it can be helpful when we're looking at sentimental stuff to ask ourselves: is it firsthand sentimental or secondhand? Let's not keep stuff just because someone else told us special, especially if it's something that we don't need. So permission to let go of extra serving dishes, especially if they're duplicates, especially if they're things that aren't actually special to you anymore, or if they're just simply too fancy for the type of entertaining that you do. Along those lines, do you have any placemats, tablecloths, uh, linen napkins that, again, they're duplicates or they're simply not getting used anymore? Permission to let that stuff go. And again, have you had any new towels, dishcloths, or uh, pot holders come in that you've purchased or brought into your kitchen, but you didn't get rid of the old ones. Again, I know, I know why we do this, right? I'm like, well, I'll keep the old pot holder. So if there's something really grody that I have to grab out of the oven, I'll use those, right? And not get my new pretty ones all dirty, right? I know the logic, but unfortunately that's the type of stuff that clutters up our kitchen and makes it a lot harder to keep clean. So if new stuff comes in, we let the old stuff go. We deserve to use nice stuff. It's totally fine. So again, any of these types of linens. And then also vases. Have you noticed, I'm sure you've noticed this too, that vases tend to multiply as well. This is a really cool one that I got at a fundraiser and I love it. So I don't need this one anymore, right? This one is just, can you see it? It's like very plain, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna let this one go. And of course in the kitchen, I think all the, just the regular things go without saying like the coffee mugs and the water bottles and the plastic cups and the plastic containers, all those things that we know just tend to multiply as well. Again, if we just start to be aware of this stuff, I think we're gonna have a lot less frustration with keeping our spaces tidy and clean. I know if it's hard to keep a space tidy that there's too much inventory in here. It's just how it is. Okay, another place we tend to add new inventory but not get rid of the old is with bath towels. We had had these, these were over 10 years old, I think, and you know how they get so scratchy and they just like don't absorb anymore? And finally I was like, I think we can get some new towels. So we have new towels, they're beautiful, they're soft, they're absorbent, but what do we do? We hang on to the old ones for just in case. And then it's hard to hold the close the linen closet again. So are there any towels, hand towels, washcloths that you have gotten new or replaced or upgraded, but you didn't get rid of the old ones? It's okay to keep a couple, a couple old ones, but let's not keep all of the old ones. All right, and again, the war on free stuff and things we didn't ask for. So kind of our dentist to send these little kits home, right? And so um, I actually just don't even accept the thing anymore. I just take the pieces I want. Otherwise I try to deconstruct them as soon as they come home, take out the things we can actually make use of, donate the stuff that we don't need. But 
overall not let it clutter up our space. Also, do you have any like old electric razors or things like that? Tom would have a way of collecting old electric razors or all of the attachments that they come with, right? That we just, we don't actually need. And so he's gotten a lot better now. He doesn't keep all the extra attachments. He lets those go. And real quick, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful for the free stuff that we get, but it just gets to be too much, right? There's so much inventory all of the time. And I just feel now I have to be kind of protective of my bandwidth and, and my mental health, right? Like we know how this clutter can stress us out. And so what could be a benefit and a really good useful thing, often ends up being clutter that just adds to the chaos. And so that's why I've had to decide to let a lot of this stuff go. I am so frugal and thrifty, right? But there is a point where it's not adding value and it's just making our lives harder. All right, some other places that we tend to add and not take away is with linens. I know, because we think, oh, those old sheets can be drop cloths and the pillowcases. What if we have guests and the extra pillows? And, and I know, right, all of the reasons. We keep all the stuff, right? But again, too much inventory. It's too much inventory. We also do this in our closets, <laughs> right? We add and add and add, and we don't take things away. So what are for sure the things you can let go? Say it with me things that have tags on them. That is giving you data. This is giving you hard evidence to work with. You haven't worn it and there's a reason. It doesn't fit, you don't feel good in it. It didn't quite live up to what you thought it was gonna be. Permission to let it go. Duplicates. Uh, we found out Tom has like 12 polos. Just kidding, he doesn't have that many, but I'm like, can we let this one go? He's like, yeah, absolutely. And stuff we got for free. It's, you know, it's cool when people give us things, we're like, hey, this might be your size, you should have it. Awesome. Sometimes it's a winner. Sometimes it's not, right? Permission to let it go so that when you get dressed in the morning, everything fits and you feel good in it. Ooh, one other thing, anything with elastic, swimsuits, workout gear, under things, uh, if they have elastic, we know how they break down over time, right? So if you're not making use of it, it might be best just to donate it now so someone can make use of it before the elastic deteriorates. All right, so over here is like our school area, desk area. And I need to, we don't start school till after Labor Day, we're very fortunate, but our homeschool area, I need to make a pass to that. And here's our things I'm gonna be looking for. Kids craft projects. I really try to instill in our kids that the fun is in making the project. The most special of special go in memory bins and then the rest eventually gets recycled or discarded. And again, just take some practice and then they get pretty used to it. Also a plant, let's go look at the, plants and books. Okay, they're kind of the same, right? We kind of get attached to both. So I don't expect you to remember this, but over here I used to have on this corner, actually in this still plant, I think ooh, I think this might need a little water. I had, is it called a philodendron? Well, it was doing really well until it wasn't and it got like this white moldy stuff on it, which I've heard it's some kind of bug or something. And you can take like rubbing alcohol and clean the leaves and get rid of it. I even got the, the rubbing alcohol. It actually sat by the plant for quite a while. I never actually got around to it. And I eventually just threw away the plant because I was worried that it was gonna get on my money plant there, which I really like and am protective of. And so here's the deal. If you have plants that are high maintenance that don't do well in your specific home, it's actually okay to let them go. Keep ones that you like that are easy to maintain. And if they just get to be too many or too much, again, it's okay to let them go. It, it might take a little practice. Do it one at a time. And same thing with books. Uh, this time of year, I'm especially looking for books that could be shared with others. So are there books that if they no longer have value to you, it could they make be made use of to others? So especially if they're have any kind of educational value workbooks. And again, looking for duplicates. <laughs> it is amazing how many duplicates, how much stuff I've accepted for free, um, just all the well-meaning stuff. Again, it's not easy, but it actually feels worse to continue to look at stuff that we've spent money on, that we didn't need it, that someone else could be making use of, than to just let it go right now and start the school year fresh. And you know, as long as we're talking about hard things right now, <laughs> let's talk about craft supplies. I saw a good quote. It said, there's a difference between doing crafts and hobbies and buying stuff for crafts and hobbies, right? And I know, I, I know what it's like to see a new project, to get excited about it, buy all the things for it, and then not quite get around to doing it, right? So again, are there craft supplies that are duplicates? Are there things that you've accepted for free that you kind of later regretted or that came with other stuff that you just don't need? We don't have to go through all the craft supplies right now, but again, let's just look for duplicates, free things that we didn't actually want, and let's pass those things on. 
Okay, so there you have it, a whole bunch of things that you could declutter from your house today that you will not even miss. Most of them were duplicates or things you didn't actually remember that you had, right? So we're gonna let those go and in exchange we get a house that is easy to keep clean and tidy and so much more peaceful. All right, well, I really hope that you found this helpful. I'm gonna link to some other videos along these same lines as well, but I love you, I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.